God for you tuning into this uh, Y uh, live stream cast. I want you to stay focused. I did a, a message uh, maybe a month ago. It was titled, Why Every Believer Need a Shepherd. Five reasons why every believer need a shepherd. And I think I did two and a half, maybe three of that the first time around. This time, I want to do something a little bit different to encourage everyone that it is a trick of the adversary to get you thinking that you are responsible for you. You are not responsible for you. You are responsible to obey the word of God. So Ephesians chapter 4, he says uh, in the 8th verse, Wherefore, when he, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he ascended on high, that's when he raised from the dead, he led captivity captive. That means he took the individuals that was in prison in Hades itself and gave gifts unto men. And further down, you read that he gave in the 11th verse some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. I want to highlight pastor, and the reason I want to focus on that one is because that is the only fivefold ministry officer that he has entrusted the sheep to. When Peter was um, uh, going through his time of testing and after the Lord was raised from the dead, he told Peter to feed my sheep. And then he told him a second time to feed my lambs. That means the baby ones and otherwise. The pastoral ministry is so unique in its uh, uh, position because God is entrusting you with it. He's called you to receive a gift. I just read it to you. He said that he gave gifts on the man. So the shepherd is a gift. The shepherd is that person that God has ordained for your life. And it's going to tell you specifics in there. Without a shepherd, you can't grow in accountability. You can't grow with proper oversight. Remember, he said he gave you the shepherd for the perfecting of the saints. That's in that fourth chapter. For the work of the ministry. And for the edifying, that means to build up the edifying of the church. And it seems like the church is lacking power right now. And it may be because we have immature people in the church that have sublimated the call, the gift, the anointing, and the role they're supposed to play in church. We've got this thing all about money now. It's all about money. But what will it profit a man to gain it all, to gain the whole world and then lose his soul? God is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. To think that God can't provide for us is really a misnomer on our part. He told us he provides for the birds, he provides for the animals, he takes care of everybody. The only thing is, is that the birds don't complain to God like we do. We get to missing a meal and we're talking trash to the Lord. Here, the one reason why God has given you a shepherd is to grow you up. It's to grow you up. You need to grow spiritually in Christ. Now, you notice I didn't say to go to church. That's inclusive, but the call is to mature you. See, when you first come out of the world and you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, you've never been in church, you don't know what to do. You don't know what to expect. You don't know what's required of you. And we have lost a lot of the tools, like Sunday school that was designed to educate you, like Bible study that no, hardly nobody attends anymore, like midweek services, nobody wants to go. We want to go only where there's going to be a prophetic word given. But the word of the Lord tells us that God has put this ministry in your life, the shepherd, to raise you, to grow you up, to make you accountable for the calling on your personal life. For instance, you want to learn how to pray and pray effectively? Without a shepherd, you'll get stuff like anybody can pray. You don't have to be all that spiritual to pray. That's a man and he puts his pants on the same way I do. 
God is, is, a, is a God that hears everybody. And, and I know because I call him and he answered me. Listen to me. He says, my words are higher than yours as the heavens is above the earth. And God never said he bought the word down to your level to comprehend it. He said in the same chapter, he said, come up hither. He said, come up here to rise, raise your level of thinking. Think different. Get rid of your stinking thinking and start thinking according to the word of God. If you do, you'll start talking like the word of God. Now the world has you hoodwinked. You're, you're dressing like the world, looking like the world, carrying on like the world. You're doing everything that the world do. And yet the Bible said that God is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. You say, oh, preacher, you sound like you're condemning me or judging me. No, if you feel condemned or judged or you feel somewhat indifferent towards this message, it is because the Spirit of God is working on your heart, mind, and thought life, trying to get you to conform. The 12th chapter of the book of Romans says to be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means you got to see it different, think it different. You've got to act it out differently. You can't have it both ways. You can't have the devil Monday through Saturday and God on Sunday. You can't have this life that you live that is absent of God, and now all of a sudden you get in trouble, you want to call on the Lord. No, he said, I gave you this particular ministry to feed you. He said that you and I are supposed to desire the sincere milk of the word so that we can grow thereby. All we hear today is a revelation on that and a revelation on this and a special calling on that. Well, we haven't mastered the little things yet. You and I have to understand that God has a way that you can't go under and you can't go over. His way is a sure way, and you and I got to come back to it. The shepherd is the one that God has made accountable and responsible for the sheep. And for a sheep, you should rejoice at that because what that tells me is that you're not responsible for yourself. The Lord said the shepherd is. When he comes back, he's going to ask the shepherd about the sheep. But if the sheep take it upon themselves to be shepherd over themselves, here's what the scripture says. Any man that measures himself by himself is unwise. You and I are called to avoid that scenario. We need a shepherd over us. We need a gift that God has given. Receive the gift, and you receive the anointing. If you receive the anointing, you receive everything that God has placed on that person that is supposed to be flowing in your life. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not saying a shepherd can't be responsible. A shepherd's got to be responsible. i got to be responsible and accountable, and so do everybody else that walks in this particular office. And if you're walking in this particular office and you ain't called to be in this particular office, you're still going to be judged as though you were called to be in the office. So what I would do if I was you, I would get outside of the office and let God do what God does best. God knows how to change a heart, change a life, and change a soul. Let him do what he wants to do. After all, there are his people not your people, and they're not my people. Every believer, every born-again person needs a shepherd. You can't do it at home. He said, brethren, forsake not the assembling of yourself together as the manner of some is. You can't have it your way. He said that you are to do so. When Jesus was ministering in the earth, it says that he went to the temple and he went there daily as it was his custom to go. This was a routine thing. Today, we fall down on everything that God has called us to do, as though God has put too much on us. He said that men should always pray, Luke 18 and 1, and not cave in and quit. He said, now he said, the translator said not to faint, but it means to not cave in and quit. And yet we don't pray effectively because we don't pray long enough because we don't learn how to pray. We just say anything that comes to our mind, and we think that's supposed to be acceptable to God. No, it's time for you to wake up. It's time for you to grow up. It's time for you to eat and feast on the Bible, the Word of God. And if you can't find it where you're at, then you need to find some place to go where you can get fed and grow up in the Lord because there are souls waiting on you. You've been born and appointed to affect change in the life of, I don't know, maybe hundreds or even thousands of people. But you've got to do something about it. You can't keep going to work, church, and back home, work, church, and back home, work, church, and back home. 
and then trying to figure out where to go on Saturdays. No, you got to go before God. Spend your days and your nights before the Lord. The shepherd is a gift and a call from God to grow you up. And he said in that book right there, I read it to you, fourth chapter, until we come into the unity of the faith and the unity of the knowledge. You know what that means? We're supposed to believe the same thing. You know what I mean? We're supposed to talk and say the same thing. Now we fuss, argue, and debate, and we decide what we want to accept and what we don't want to accept. But that's the work of the devil. The work of the devil will have you divided against the church and divided against your own self. The shepherd can't lead you if you don't want to be led. You've got to be pliable. You've got to learn to follow what God is telling you. You say, well, how do I know? Oh, I know. I've been doing this a long time, and I came in green just like you probably coming in green. I didn't know what to do, what to sing, and how to live, and etc. But every time I found out how to make a change, I changed. Every time I found out something was wrong, I stopped doing it. Every time I found out going where I was going, was I stopped doing it. Now, you got to understand something. God doesn't respond to everybody the same way. He will respond to everybody that responds to the word of God the same way. If he's got to keep telling you over and over again the same thing and you haven't learned it yet, then it may be a while before you learn it. If you practice obeying, when God tells you to do something, do it right away. And if you do it right away, he'll, it'll get to a point where you'll call him, he'll come right away. If you ask him for something, he'll give it to you right away. If you ask him to open the door, he'll open it right away. Why? Because what a man sow, even with God, that is what he will reap. If you sow promptness, if you sow consistency, if you sow constancy, if you sow obedience, that's what you will get from God. Whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But not everybody's calling is getting that answer because they don't warrant the same. Because when God tells them to do something, they don't do it. A few more minutes. They don't do it. So listen, he says that you and I, God wants us to grow up. We got a church full of babies. We got a church full of babies. We got no elders. We got no uh, trailblazers at all. We got everybody that want to be but don't know how to be what they desire to be. And that's a major, major problem. What we got to do is start to focus and dial this thing back so that we can do what God says do. If God has called you to be an usher in the house, you need to be in the house. If he called you to be a, 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 a janitor in the house, you need to be in the house. If he called you to be a, a leader of the worship service, then you need to not just lead the worship service. Go learn how to worship. Go and learn how to worship. Read everybody's book. Read everybody's book. Look at everybody's video. Visit these conferences. Learn how to worship. Whatever God has called you to do, you have to apply yourself. And if you apply yourself, God will do the rest. Every born-again believer needs a shepherd over their lives. He did not call you to supervise, oversee, and lead yourself. It doesn't add up when he says that the men of God is going to be held accountable for it. In the Old Testament, in the book of Jeremiah, he got on the shepherds, and he got on those that was misleading and fleecing the sheep and, and, and carrying on all kind of ways. He got on their case. And he says, I'm going to give you shepherds after my own heart. Now, that's a thing right there. He says, I'm going to give you shepherd after my own heart. I wonder whose heart we've been operating after. He says, I'm going to give you shepherds after my own heart. See, when God gives you a shepherd, you can't buy them, you can't bribe them, you can't hard time them, you can't blackmail them, you can't do none of that stuff, not and get away with it. Because just like God will defend you, God will defend his leader. Are you with me? Your, your job is to understand also that if you're put in this earth, and especially if you're still here, especially if you're still here, that you could have gone with the first wave of people that left out with the COVID. If you're still here, then that's more reason why you should seek the will of God for your life. God has a plan for your life. Otherwise, he could have let you go on out with the first load. And there are still others that are going out. What I was, if I was you, whether I was a young teenage boy or girl or whether I was an old person, I would be seeking, God, what is it that you want me to do? How can I grow up right now? How can I expedite things? How can I catch up my years that I've lost and forfeited through doing my own thing? You know, in the book of Corinthians, in the fifth chapter, he said that we are not to live our lifetime just to satisfy ourselves. 
but we have a greater one to satisfy, even the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you, it's a selfish thing when people decide to stay home and do what they want to do, work on Sundays and work on the days they're supposed to be in church. Let me tell you something. I understand sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But if I was you, I'd be, God, give me a plan. Give me a plan. Give me a plan so I can get out of this scenario. Give me a plan so I can get out of this, this situation because I want to be where you want me to be. I want to be doing what you want me to do. And you'll find all kind of examples in the New Testament where God assigned people to do stuff and came back and they were doing something different. There is a God idea and then there's a good idea. And most people go with the good idea instead of the God idea. Some people are working and genuinely have to work. I understand that. But this is for all of you who don't have to work, but you're working because you want to work. You're working because you feel you need to work because you won't trust the Lord to be your provider and to take care of you. The shepherd should be the most coveted calling and ministry in the Bible among the fivefold ministry. Every believer needs a shepherd over their life. As a matter of fact, if you read the Bible carefully, it says that when Satan approached Jesus about Peter, Jesus came back to Peter and he said, Peter, Satan has asked permission to shift you. He said he wants to sift you like wheat. He said, but listen, after you've been strengthened, he says, strengthen the brethren. Look at what I like about that. Look at the adversary that has to come and actually get consent from the shepherd to attack the members of the flock. Are you with me? That's why you need a shepherd. He, that the adversary will have to get permission if, if they're walking upright before God. There won't be nothing. The Bible says there's nothing hid except what will be revealed. There's nothing in secret except what will be made known. And God make known those things to his men and women in the gospel. Learn to follow the leading of the Lord. It's time to grow up, church. It's a dangerous time now. It's an uncertain time. It's time to grow up. It's time to get back in the church. It's time to worship God in spirit and in truth. It's time to read the Bible with intent and purpose. It's time to meditate on the scripture over and over again. It's time to get built up on the inside. It's time to pray in tongues. It's time to pray in your own language. It's time to get this thing back on fire for God. You've got to get on fire for the Lord. A lukewarm church he's not coming back for. He said, lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. I would that you was hot or cold. So what you and I got to do is, God, make me hot. My words make them fat and full of power. Make my enemies wood and make me fire. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord watch over you. Until the next time we come back with an inspiring word from the Lord. You stay tuned and keep us in your prayers. Recover our ministries, Church 53499 Hill Road, City of Sunrise. You don't want to miss it. God bless you. Until the next time.